Hello, viewers, and welcome to this edition of Sensor 360 Investor. And in today's video, we'll, we'll take a look at the market segment of our framework. Topic is markets and sectors. So we want to take a look at market strength. And before we begin, a quick word about the disclaimer. Please pause, read, and then continue. Thank you. And on with the show. So without much further ado. Okay, so let's take a look at some charts. Okay, so let's take a look at the, the big picture first. This is the uh, S&P 500 index, and we are looking at the weekly charts of this each uh, bar on this chart is a single week, this time frame. And so what, first thing you notice is we've still been in this uptrend. The index is moving up. As you can see, there's been a couple of uh, pullbacks along the way during this uptrend, but overall still a healthy looking uptrend. And then in terms of our short-term timers, the short-time timer is up. So that went positive back in the April 26th, the week off. We saw a little dip in the intermediate, but that picked back up. And this then went to negative. And the long-term trend's been on since uh, back here, roughly April 6th. So and that's still an uptrend. So in terms of timing, everything looks good on the S&P 500. Index is moving up. And uh, just looking at this chart, you would not think that there's anything uh, seriously to worry about. OK, so let's move on from the uh, S&P 500 index and take a look at um, the main spider sectors. So this will give us an indication of where to transpiring uh, for the, the move in the indexes. So first up, we'll take a look at uh, the growth sectors and, and we'll start with the technology. This chart is what we're looking at is the relative strength performance of the sector versus the S&P 500. So if the blue line is moving up, that means this issue, XLK in this case, is outperforming the S&P 500. If it's moving down, uh, trending down like this, it means that for this period, the uh, issue XLK was underperforming the S&P 500. And if it's moving flat like this, it means they were kind of even par. Neither it was a, uh, through the duration, neither was it really outperforming or underperforming. So basically going sideways. And then if we look at the uh, longer term trend with a couple of moving averages, we can see that overall XLK uh, has been outperforming, you know, albeit there's been a few uh, periods of underperformance. But if you'd gotten into the XLK back here, you know, you would have outperformed the, uh, the S&P 500 handsomely. So that's the S&P. So this one is definitely working and performing. So let's have a look at uh, communication services. And for the most part, it's up, although we can see that we have a quite a lengthy period where it's more, more more flat than up. So we had a little incline uh, uptrend here, but it's been mostly flatty. So communication services sector isn't really uh, kind of supporting the, the trend of the index. And now let's have a look at consumer discretionary. So the consumer piece of this, another growth sector. So here we have a different picture the trend is actually down, which means that the consumer discretionary sector tied to the consumer is actually underperforming the S&P 500. So if you parked your money in the sector, chances are you'd be not doing as well if you just parked in SPY, for example. So the growth, so we have a mixed bag in the growth. We have one outperforming in XLK, one underperforming in XLY, and one is flat. XLC. Um, so let's go on and take a look at the rest of the sector, see what the story there is. So we'll start with materials. And so we can see materials is underperforming. Let's look at energy. And we can see energy is at a couple of counter trends, but pretty much is in a downward trend. 
So we can see the long term trend using this blue moving average. XLF has, for the most part, been doing nothing for this period, but our long term trend is down and it's picked up and resumed its downtrend. Wonder performance, I should say. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's look at the industrials. Similar to financials, and industrials have not uh, been packed, treading water, and now they're underperforming the uh, S&P 500. So they could get the uh, consumer staples next up. So this is a defensive sector. And this has been underperforming as well, which is uh, interesting with uh, XLK outperforming so that <clears throat> that's what's driving the index. And uh, looks doesn't look like the money is rotating out of that at this time into the defensive sectors. And so these these are just not attracting any money. They're seriously underperforming the uh, S and P five hundred. Okay, next up is another <clears throat> defensive sector utilities. So this had a little pickup uh, counter trend, but now resumed its downtrend. Long term trend is down. So there was a little bit of money piling into this for a short period, but um, it's piled back out. And then XLV. So this can be, there can be growth components in this, like biotechnology uh, <clears throat> industries and uh, big pharma, but it's also considered a defensive sector because it's fairly stable in uh, in times of recession and contractions. So this this has an element of both, but we can see again it's uh, been trending down and continues to trend down. Down. So those are the large sectors, and let's just take a look at one other area, which is uh, was separated out of the finance sector. Oops some time ago, which is the real estate sector. And we can see that this one is also now underperforming the uh, S&P 500. So pretty much the the only sector that's really doing anything positive seems to be XLK. And within XLK, we've got some um, large companies which are driving this. So let's take a look at those. There's actually 65, so we won't go through all of them, but let's just go down to about, okay, we'll stop at NXBI. And this is and it's just all by default today's action. So Corning, <clears throat> so downtrend has been performing off recently. So this one hasn't been doing much lifting. This one's a bit of a downtrend. So not everything in XLK is uh, moving up. This one had a recent uptick. Mostly down. Mostly down. We'll skip some unknowns, but electronic components, this one's <clears throat> no performance at all. And let's just have a look at So there's 102 stocks in this list. Let's have a look at OLED. So we can see oh, it was kind of cycling and it's recently in, it's been in a period of outperformance. We had a period of outperformance here, underperformance here, period of outperformance. The stock is kind of cycling through. And let's look at a few 
of the more recent trackers. Powell, so this one is in a fairly strong uptrend. A little erratic, but the trend is up. Let's just pick out a couple of other names out of this. So these were all the names that moved up today. And these are the moves, names that moved down today. So just taking a look at, and these are the XLK components. So based on this list, there's a few that are outperforming, and, but it's not a clean sweep. So let's actually take a look at <clears throat> the mega caps. And we'll start with the uh, meta. So we can see <clears throat> how meta has been outperforming. Let's look at Microsoft. <clears throat> So Microsoft has overall trend is up, but we can see it's kind of uh, looks like it's been tapped out. May be breaking out and it's up performance over here. So we'll have to see what Microsoft does over the next few days. Apple had a down period and then it got revitalized <clears throat> after its earnings report. So it's had a sharp prompt up period of our performance moving up. Amazon's got a very strong app performance moving up. Nvidia, <clears throat> we can see solid app performance. A little, little side of his action probably basing through that period there. Another nice mini base here. And then it was uh, still moving up pretty smartly. Google mostly outperformance through this period, a little underperformance through here, and then since then it's uh in the period of strong outperformance there. And Tesla, which has been in a bit of a sell-off, and we can see how that one is uh underperformance through this period here. And then it's kind of started to move in sync with the markets. And then recent uptick in terms of uh, its earnings and some maybe some short co uh, call covering going on there. But either way, and it's at a long-term upper channel that we're sitting at actually on the chart. So those, and let's just look at a couple of other Big names, really. So strong app performance there. And JPM. So this one, for the most part, is showing relative app performance, not as strong as uh, some of the technical stocks. Let's take a Berkshire. So this one's been coming off a little bit. And just a couple of other notable names in the high caps. Walmart, as we can see, has been picking up quite strong our performance. So when, or in these stocks, when we get these periods of our performance, that's what's pushing the market up. So we can see which ones are, are moving. Some have moved, some moved, started to move a while ago. Some have been moving for a while and continuing to move. Others have that were in downtrends, putting pressure on the indexes have now reversed and are starting to move up. And some of them are just kind of tag, team tagging with each other. They take a week off and something else moves up. And then that takes a week off and the other one moves back up, um, all creating upward pressure in the indexes. And so what we see is that the indexes continue to grind higher and higher. And yet, as we saw with the sectors, <clears throat> We really aren't seeing that across the board. And so stock picking obviously becomes in crucial. Another 
um, thing to look at would be the uh, ETF, uh, the top 50 S&P stocks. And we can see that for the most part, the growth is outperforming the broader index as well. So this is constant. This is the the top fifty by market cap, and we can see in that space they are basically holding up the market and moving it up. So it may be a little bit more than just the the Mag Seven stocks that get talked about all the time. Uh, so there's a little bit. It is it is a little bit broader than that. But the uh, counter argument is on the sectors on the XLK is really doing anything. The others are either flat in XLC's case or down in the rest of the cases. So that tells us that breadth is not super wide or broad. Um, there's another thing we can look at, which would be new highs and, and the uh, last couple of days going into uh, wrapping around the July 4th weekend, or July 4th itself. We had a couple of uh, strong showings in the new, new highs uh, showing up, so this counts were north of a uh, uh, hundred, which is bullish, and so there is still some uh, meat on the bone in this run um, that looks like it wants to play out at this stage. So keep a track of your long-term holdings and uh, and just keep watching those, and when the time comes. Be, be ready with your decision whether you want to hold, fold, or uh, do something else. Okay, so that's it for this video in terms of charts. And let's uh, wind up. So the purpose of the Today's video was just take, take really to take a look at uh, the market indexes in terms of the broad market, the S&P 500, and the relative action in terms of its constituencies. And as we noted that uh, it's not a uniform picture, it's not a majority picture. It, it really is narrow in the sense that XLKs and its holdings are driving it up. And, and some of the, the larger cap stocks that in the S&P 50 are doing some of the heavy lifting. There are there are other stocks moving up as we looked at last week in terms of leaders. Uh, and they're, they're uh, usually a little bit lower on the quality ranking, uh, but have strong momentum plays. So there's lots of uh, good opportunities for stock picking and trading as of now. Uh, so we shall watch and continue to see if this market continues or broadens, or begins to top weaken and starts to deteriorate. So a lot of possibilities uh, in the weeks ahead as we make the run up into uh, the election season. Okay, so what? thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. That's it for this video. Goodbye.